Greetings, everyone. I would like to acknowledge the ancestors, our African ancestors and our Native American and indigenous ancestors. I would like to acknowledge them for each day we live, walk, breathe on sacred ground. To all who have sacrificed so much for us to be here today, right here, right now. Thank you everyone for joining us. My name is Gina Belafonte and I am the executive director of Sankofa.org, a nonprofit organization that is founded by my father, Harry Belafonte. Sankofa.org educates, motivates, and activates artists and allies in service of grassroots movements and equitable change. In our partnership with the uh, Kennedy Center, we're excited to be here today. The Kennedy Center has been identified as the nation's cultural center. As such, it is uniquely poised to connect and uplift artists' communities across this country. Sankofa.org and the Kennedy Center have come together today in partnership, and we acknowledge the unique circumstances during this universal struggle through a pandemic while simultaneously confronting America's history of oppression. The Couch Concerts are a celebration of humanity through the arts, uplifting the role of the arts during times of social and societal struggle, to join in community, to inspire, heal, rebuild, and ultimately move forward together as a nation. We are very excited here at Sankofa.org that the Kennedy Center invited us to participate. We're grateful and um, we're loving this Couch Concert program and the platform. Today's guest has an unmistakable rasp, very much like my father's. Her unshakable grasp on soul and funky spirit ensured her status as a 21st century icon. Since her arrival with the triple platinum album on How Life Is in 1999, selling over 25 million albums globally, winning a Grammy Award and two Brit Awards, collaborating with everyone from Ariana Grande to Galactic, and selling out venues in nearly every corner of the globe two decades into her storied career. Please welcome to the Couch Concerts, Macy Gray. Hello. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. Wow, yeah, I'm so grateful for you to be here today. And we're gonna have a little chat. I know you're gonna do a performance for us a bit later and we're really, really excited to hear you. But we, we also know though that you have a lot to share and a lot to talk about. You know, your talents um, resound beyond music as well. We, we know that you've starred in Tyler Perry's For Colored Girls and have graced the screen everywhere from um, Brotherly Love and Cardboard Boxer um, to Netflix hit uh, Full, Fuller House um, and made the now legendary appearance in Training Day alongside Academy Award winner Denzel Washington. So that is like an amazing career. And often we see um, artists who are in one genre and area of the arts trans transfer over to other uh, artistic endeavors. And I think that's really super cool. Um, I too am an artist. I, I, I was an actress for a long time. And I have one very quick story. I, um, I had an audition once for a play um, opposite Denzel Washington. And I got to audition with him at a callback and when I had met his wife, she said to me, I don't know if you'll get the part, but you better go in there and audition like you have it because it might be the only opportunity you get to play the role. And it really was, I didn't get the part, but I did get to audition with him and he was such a generous um, <laughs> artist. Um, any cool story of your experience working with him on training day? Um, I just remember we were always on set and we would have to kind of hurry up and get Done so he could fly to the game. He used to. He was really adamant about being at all the basketball games. Yes. Oh. He would always have to be there <laughs> in times so he could make the game. You know. That was. I remember that. And then I remember. Um. There's a scene. The scene that I was in. We were in. Um. Imperial Heights and uh in, in L. A. And um, they were. You know, it was a shootout scene. So. 
these people started coming out of the apartments, you know, with guns, like dudes, like ready to, you know, do whatever. We right. thought something was going on. So Denzel turns to the director and he goes, you better put them in the movie. Like, cause he knew, you know, yeah, something might go wrong. So um, he did, he put all of them in the movie. All those, all those extras in that scene were lived right there in those apartments. That's awesome. That's I awesome. Know. Yeah, he's a story. Great. Well, with all those accomplishments that you that I've listed previously, and there's so many more to add to that list, you're still inventing yourself. You're you're as I always say, as human beings, we're always a work in progress, and finding ways. Um, you're always finding ways to connect to community. So I would love for you to tell us a bit about the organization MyGood.org and your work with families affected by police brutality. I know it's something dear to your heart and something you're working very hard to um, put out there and, and, and I'd love to hear more about it. Well, it's called mygood.org. And um, when I hear the stories of police brutality, especially uh, the murders, um, my first thought goes to the families because yeah. I had two uh, people very close to me lose a child. And I saw, um, you know, I saw how, how it can destroy people. It can destroy people's lives, people's bank accounts, you know, divorces, bankruptcy, um, and and just, you know, uh, people that aren't able to work for two years because they can't get out of bed, so. Yeah, the trauma is so real. Yeah, so I, I just don't want people to forget about the moms and the dads and the sisters and the brothers and, and the people who, because we're all doing this whole protest and everybody has an opinion and we're posting, but they're actually living it. Living the tragedy, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Um, created uh, mygood.org to uh, just keep, to make sure that, that people keep those families uh, first in these situations and, and, and to ask people to support them. Yeah, I'm, I've been reading um, a bit about the work and it sounds so fabulous. I know that you want to be able to provide uh, mental health support to connect families, you know, with uh, mental health networks and specialists, which I think is so, so important for healing. And I know that you're, you know, it's a lot of advocacy um, to, to share their stories and to ensure that laws are changed around some of the egregious violations that police um, often uh, commit against our communities, particularly communities of color. And also that you're trying to support, you know, support and, and provide family support and to find ways that, you know, financially for sure, but also just other ways to connect them to resources so that they don't feel so alone and, and so lost out there. You know, um, Sankofa.org has done a lot of work with families, um, with um, family members that have been murdered by police. And, you know, it's a club nobody wants to belong to. Right and a network of folks that nobody really wants to belong to. But, you know, it's so important, I think, um, for, for artists and allies to really shine a light on the plight and the, um, the violations so often that our police um, forces in every state in America um, keep on bringing to our communities and certainly yeah. the families. And um, I know that today we have two family members with us, um, two extremely um, powerful women who have been advocating for their families and their loved ones and their lost uh, family member. And, or I should say not lost because their, their family member is not lost. Their family member was murdered and we need to call a thing a thing and be really mindful and, um, yeah. and purposeful in how we describe these incidents. And I would love for you to introduce them and I would, we would love to hear from them and really um, wherever you would like to take the, the conversation, Macy, with them, uh, we're open to. We want to make sure that however we're inviting families to participate, we don't want to re-traumatize in any way, but we also want to make sure that we're sending out messages to the greater public on what those families want people to understand more deeply about what they go through and what they want to have changed. Right. Okay, so today we have um, uh, Wanda Johnson. She's the mother of Oscar Grant. Um, Oscar was murdered in uh, Oakland. He's the, did you see Fruitvale Station, the movie? Yes, yes, absolutely. Well, his story was the inspiration for that movie. She's an incredible person. She's actually been uh, leading this whole thing and connecting me with all the families 
and she's she's super gracious and and uh, you know has learned how to you know how to how to live with it as far as I can see because mm -hmm. I know all the moms are in really different stages you know after when you're grieving there's all kinds of different levels and stages that you go to you know yes. There's Wanda, Reverend Wanda Johnson. Welcome. Hey, Wanda. Hello, how are you? Thank you for inviting me today. Thank you for joining us. Always a pleasure and an honor. Yeah, and and then, yeah go ahead. Oh, no, I was just didn't know if you wanted to. Go ahead. Yeah, please. Me? Yes. Do you want, do you want you me to, to, you to invite? Yes, you want to yeah. invite? Yes. And then we have a uh, Samaria Rice, who's now so amazing. She's doing a lot in in her community in Cleveland, Ohio, where I'm from. I'm from Canton, Ohio, but Cleveland's <laughs> an hour away. And um, her son uh, is Tam Tamir Rice, who just had a birthday. Would have been 18, and um, and she's here with this another incredible, incredible person. Yes, Samaria Rice. Um, who I'm sure will be joining us in just a moment. Here she comes. Okay. Oh, she's okay. She she stepped away for a moment, so so she'll she'll join us when she returns. But let's um, let's talk with with Wanda. Um, is there anything in particular that uh, Macy you want to talk to Wanda about, and or or that Wanda you might want to share? Yeah, why don't you just tell them, tell them how it is. Tell everybody what they should be fighting for, what, what we should be focused on, because I think everybody's guessing and everybody wants to do something, but you, you're, you, you've you lived it and you know what really needs to be done. You know? Thank you for having that confidence in me, Macy. You know, <laughs> when um, Oscar was killed, um, it took a long time to process that. Um, him being laying on a platform with hundreds of people watching him, um, hands behind his back, complying with the officers, following the instructions, and yet the officer sits up and shoot him and he ends up dying. But from that, all that watch that, as well as my family, face the traumatic sight of just seeing that. Mm -hmm. And we don't talk about the mental health that happens from watching such a horrific event that many of us have now witnessed um, through different deaths that we have seen, um, whether it be Oscars, whether it be Eric Gardner's, whether it be Michael Brown's, whether it be George Floyd's, whether it be Tamir Rice's. We don't think about the mental effect, the trauma that it puts on us as we continue to see those things happening. And so offering some type of mental health uh, counseling to families who have been affected by these traumatic situations could help the family greatly. You know, when we lose our children you know, we have to, if we don't have insurance for our children, you know, we have to come up with ways to have that funeral where the officer is still oftentimes being paid. He's not losing any funds, but yet the family is losing, trying to scramble how they could put their loved one to rest in a nice setting. And so oftentimes families who's not uh, nationwide, whose child are being killed, need help just like the one who is um, broadcast nationwide. And so offering some kind of funds and assistance to the families could also help relieve one of the burdens and the stressors that they encounter um, with the loss of their loved ones. You know, I could go on and I could tell you that, you know, many of us don't think that voting is, you know, going to help. But I, I, I want to say that if we vote from the bottom up, knowing who we are signing up to be in office for us, um, we could change the narrative. If we know our district attorneys, 
you know, what they're about, if they're taking money from the police stations or the police uh, unions, um, then we shouldn't vote for them. We should vote for someone who's going to be for the people. Even in the mayor's office and the city councils, we have to begin to really get involved and know who we are putting in office to change the way our government system is running. And then, you know, I, 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 I certainly advocate for um, more accountability with changing the narrative of how the police use of force um, is continuing on, how time after time the person is shot or killed um, by the police and then there's no accountability, there's no justice, and the police ends up going to another community to work. And we strongly suggest that we get involved in this to change that, to Absolutely. continue to uh, make sure police are held accountable for their actions. And I just want to say it's so with my son's case, it was the first time in California history that an officer had been charged. But look how many people have gotten killed before and after that didn't get any kind of justice. And so we got to change that. We have to change it. And so, I, you know, I'm just glad to be on the line. And I just say, you know, the mental health being able to support the family, um, just sometimes sitting there listening. You don't have to say a word, but just listen as they pour out their heart, you know, regarding their loved one. Be there to hug, love, you know, tell them that you're thinking about them. Let them know that you're there for them. You know, bring them a bottle of water or a case of water, you know. Mm. People say they can't do much, but you can. You know, if we all work together to, you know, love and hug on each other when uh, families face what I face, we can change the narrative. We can really you. can. Thank you so much for all that you just said. It's so, so important what you said, Wanda, because people seem to think, especially with this upcoming election, that all we have to do is concentrate on the presidency. And while that is huge at this time, like really huge. There are other races that are critical to each city and the district mm -hmm. attorney's races is one of them. And I have to admit, and I will admit it, I made a mistake when I voted for the district attorney of Los Angeles the last time because I judged a book by its cover and I didn't do my research. And I deeply regret that I wasn't more informed because I thought, oh, she's a black woman, so she's gotta be down, right? Not the case, not the case at all. And it's so important for us to make sure that once we have a new administration or whatever administration we have, we have to apply pressure to, re to, to get rid of qualified immunity, which allows these police officers Absolutely. To, you know, that kind of space. Now, Samaria, you're, you're with us. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, you know, we were talking about qualified immunity. We're talking about creating a database so that there is a, an accountability around officers, especially those who who not only murder people, but also have other kinds of violations so that when they get dismissed from one uh, um, police um, station and they go to another, that there is a database so that you can learn more and know more. Um, how, well, what do you feel about that? And um, and also, you know, we were also talking about relieving the burden of stress on the families, especially right after they have uh, the loss of a loved one. But I also would argue that it's ongoing. The loss is never ending. And the support sometimes floods in all at once very early. And then it kind of starts to dwindle and go away. And I think it's important for us to be mindful of our families ongoing. Yes. Um, thank you for having me, um, Macy and uh, Gina. Um, what I have to say about this, um, this whole situation um, that we're still fighting after, uh, you know, 400, 500 years of slavery and injustice in this country is um, I'm kind of fed up with having um conversations that's not really going anywhere. So where I'm at right now is defund the police department and do away with the uh, police bill of rights, do away with the uh, Garrity law, 
do away with the blue alert, do away with the uh, qualified immunity, do away with the arbitration process, the police union, and start from scratch at this point, um, implement, um, you know, we need change by implementing exactly what you said, a database, um, not only a data, not only a database, but um, insurance policies for these officers and things like that. And also some type of classes, psychological classes and random drug tests and, um, and psychological um, testing for them, but also some type of course, you know, for, for white police officers that want to come to urban communities. They don't know nothing about our community, so I don't know why they're down here. So I think that some type of, you know, something needs to be created. You know, again, I'm very, very strong in what I say. And I say do away with the whole system. The whole Constitution needs to be rewritten and not just amended. It needs to be destroyed and rewritten. So um, that's just where I'm at, you know, because I'm just fed up waking up every day and it's another black and brown person dead on behalf of the police and I and I mean I'm never able to never going to be able to heal um you know just because mm-hmm. of what happened to my family and my son and you know in this situation we never be able to heal we just move forward and just continue to get the necessary help like Miss Wanda said with our mental care and it's just very important that we have it because it really will put you in a state of mind where you're not thinking clearly and okay. you're not making you're not making good decisions and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I, I have been in therapy and I'm I'm going to probably be in it for the rest of my life because I have a very uh, a severe the, one of the severest cases of um, PTSD that I suffer with on a daily basis. So um, I'm going to always uh have that part of my life and you know I don't mind I you know I I encourage people to get that but also with the also with the police sorry also with the police department you know I just believe in it's time to have those conversations with the governor um the supreme court and congress and make the demands and make the demands and that's just where I'm at with it I'm not there's 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 actually no more trying to talk about it because we've been talking about it for years and um you know I'm like I'm kind of you know I'm I'm <laughs> I'm almost one of the you know no no shade to you Wanda but I'm almost one of the younger mothers out the group and I'm not playing these games with them you know I'm like I'm not a millennium but you know my the way my mind is and then my kids you know I have a I have a 22 year old, I have a 24 year old and a 20 year old that, that I have to be strong for and guide them the right way. You know what I'm saying? So I have a, I have a, I have a few views on what this great country they call America should look like, but, um, you know, we could definitely get into that another time. Well, I hope all your children are registered to vote and go to the polls and actually exercise their right to do so. Absolutely. Yeah, it's absolutely. Extremely, extremely important that we vote this administration mm-hmm. out and that we yeah. also find a way in which to make sure that the whatever administration comes in, it's very guided by the voice of the people and the demands that many movements are making, especially movement for Black Lives and Black Lives Matter movement. Um, yeah, I'm actually do, I'm doing a, a workshop in, um, in honor of Samir because he would have been 18. So I'm doing a workshop in Cleveland to educate people on voting, how to vote, and why it's important to vote. So I have I teamed up with um, Cleveland Votes to do that. That's beautiful. That's so important, especially in Ohio, being a swing state, as they call it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, any last words from the two of you mothers before we are beautifully graced with, with Macy's performance? Or Macy, is there anything that you want to um, touch upon before we um, cut to you? Oh, I'm seeing it now. No, no, no. I just wasn't sure if there's something you might want to say before or ask the moms before we uh, we do go to your performance. Yeah, I just want to say support these families because they need it more than anybody. I know there's a lot of uh, donate to this and donate to that, but I think people get so caught up in the hype and the protesting and the, uh, and then you forget the people who are who are really suffering and, um, Absolutely. and really living it and who really 
understand what's really going on because I think everybody has opinion and and uh, we're kind of all guessing what we should do next. But I think um, like these moms wanted to marry, like they they've been to the courts, they've listened to the mouth, they've you know sat there while the judges you know, made a horrible decision. They. You know what I mean? They've, they've done it all. They've been there. Absolutely. It's important when you're organizing anything that you make sure you yeah, hear yeah. from the people and the people that know from yeah. lived experience. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you guys want to say the foundation? I, I do. Um, I run the Oscar Grant Foundation. And I want to thank you both for inviting me on today because what I've been noticing around the climate, and I don't know if Samaria has noticed this too, is that there's a lot of people talking about the issues, but they're not really bringing the families who have been impacted by the loss of their children to the table. And so until you're real about it and you bring those who have actually had the experience of losing a child at that table, it's kind of, in my opinion, I'm, I don't want to say fruitless, but if you want to make it real, you need to bring the families like you ladies are doing today to the table who have lost loved ones, who can share their experience of what they have gone through. And so, you know, um, that's one of the things that the foundation, the Oscar Grant Foundation does you know, we want to make it real for people to know that, you know, as mothers, as families that have lost their loved ones, there is tremendous hurt. There is a tremendous change that takes place in our households. And sometimes, you know, people are not aware. They come towards the week of the funeral and maybe a week after. And then months later or weeks later, you don't even see them no more nor hear from them. And I think it was Gina that said that it's an ongoing process. It doesn't stop. And you need to be in support of that family going forward if you're going to be in support of that family at all. And so, again, I thank you, ladies. And you can look us up on the Oscar Grant Foundation dot org. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope you all can see me. I have lost, um, sadly, my video. So I, can you all hear me? Yeah, yeah. we hear you. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Samaria, do you want to let us know about yours? Yeah, so I am um, Samaria Rice, the founder and CEO of Tamir Rice Foundation. And um, I service children in the inner city of Cleveland with after school programming. And just like Miss Wanda said, there's really no conversation if you don't bring the mothers to the table, um, the families to the table that has been directly impacted, that has the experience with the attorneys, the federal, um, the federal, state, local, and everything. We have those experience. So we definitely need to be at the table with Congress, the Supreme Court, and the governors of the states that practice the um uh, police bill of rights and stuff like that. That I mean, we could start there. That's a good start right there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, I just really, you know, I've worked with both of you mothers before. I haven't seen you in a while and I'm so yeah. happy to see you right now. You always um, bring so much love and important information to the table and my heart is full seeing the two of you and I look forward to us also doing more work together. And Macy, thank you so much for inviting both uh, Wanda and Samaria to this conversation. And so peace and blessings to both of you. Thank Everyone you. out there, please make sure that you find how, uh, with the links that were provided that you go to these organizations and you donate. And if you can't donate money, then find ways in which that you can get engaged and offer yourself of service. And, and there might be a mother in your own community that you can help support. Um, and with that being said, I would like to turn this, um, this time over to Macy. Macy is going to bless us with some songs to fill our hearts, to, to open our hearts and minds to all that we have just heard and to deepen our commitment to making sure we find a new way forward together. I 
That was well said. <laughs> okay. I didn't know. Okay, we're singing. All right, sorry. Okay, I have to look. All right. That was so beautiful. I love, love, love. Alex Kine on the bass. I'm sorry, say again. Who's on the bass? Alex Kine. Hello, all in there. I know we can't see you all. We appreciate you. That was so beautiful. Thank Macy, do you want to sing anything else? Um, if you want me to. <laughs> no, I do. I love your voice. I love you. Yes. Want to do another one? Yeah, that would be so awesome. Okay, here we go. Yeah. 
So beautiful. I want you to know, because I'm sure you can't see it, you know, um, that was so heartfelt and just so beautiful. And I, um, that's one of my favorite songs. And um, there are a lot of people in the live chat that are just um, singing your praises. I love you, Macy. Um, I love you as an actress too. I hope to see you in so much more. One of my favorite songs, someone else said. Um, Anyway, and there's a lot of applause, like claps in the chat so that you know, I know you can't hear them, but I hope that you can feel them in your heart because <laughs> you're so appreciated. Um, so what a gift and a talent you have. I'm so glad you chose in your life to share it. Um, you inspire so many people. And I think now, you know, um, it's always, um, an honor to, to, to be able to be in spaces like this so that people can understand some of the other work that you're doing. So I just want to shine a light once again on mygood.org. And so people need to keep an eye out for that and to really look into all of that it will do in terms of bringing services to families um, that are dealing with police brutality and police murder, um, bringing them services around mental health support, advocacy and family support. Also, we had the beautiful um, Reverend Wanda Johnson and Samaria Rice on. They also too have two foundations that um, I'm hopeful you all out there will make sure you do more um, due diligence on your own to learn more about the Oscar Grant Foundation and also about the Tamir Rice Foundation. Um, and also please make sure that you're not only registered to vote, but that you go out there and you vote. And sometimes we don't always have the person that we wish was in the um, seat for us to vote for, but sometimes you gotta just take one for the team, uh, you know? And so you gotta get out there and you gotta vote, vote, vote. Um, Macy, is there any, um, any last words you wanna share with the community or say, or is there another song you might wanna sing? Yeah, I just wanna say, you know, um, and, and echo you one more time if you, you know, you got to vote. If you don't vote, you ain't black, you ain't white, you ain't doing nothing. <laughs> yep. And, and, uh, and, um, you know, I'm trying. I think everybody in the room and you were all trying. We, we all realize that a lot of, of change needs to happen and we don't have all the answers. And there's some systems that have been around for centuries, like the police. So that's not going to change every night. And I, and I notice people, 
you know, have kind of calmed down on the protest and the, all that. And, and that's okay. You know, you, you do something for as long as you can, but I just don't want people to forget that nothing has changed yet. We don't, you know, we, we all, we all went a little crazy for a while, but nothing, nothing has flipped yet. So please don't stop. And I, and I want to say to all artists out there, you know, we're all kind of taught or groomed or somebody whispers in our ear, you know, that you can't, you have to watch your politics because you might, you know, lose your audience or turn people off. But you know, like, what good is audience if 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 the world is all messed up? And and there aren't many people more powerful than an artist. You know, we have the, the opportunity and the and the platform to reach billions of people all day, every day. So I just I just want every artist out there to to really. Um, you know, do your part and, and, and understand your power and your strength and, and how much of an effect you can have on on the way things go from here. And just right. like Maria said, you know, it really all needs to be started from scratch and torn down and, and redone because, you know, we're always looking for the new iPhone. Like, what's the next iPhone? But nobody talks about, you know, where's the new constitution? Like, where's the new yeah. way of policing? Where's the new way of, of education? You know what I mean? Instead of, you know, the next TikTok, like where's, where's the new things that you know? What, what when are we gonna update things like that? You Absolutely. Know I mean? Absolutely. So that's just um, that's just what I wanna talk, wanted to say. That was it. That's awesome. You know, my father always said, um, and he says he got it from his mentor, um, that artists are the gatekeepers of truth that were civilization's radical voice. And you said it so beautifully. It's absolutely imperative that our artists come forward and use their platform, just like we're doing today, uh, and how you have brought your work forward and the work of these two courageous and beautiful mothers um, to talk about issues that really um, are important for people to be educated on. Well, Macy, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us today. And um, I look forward to- Excuse me. Thanks, my band. They got up early. This is early. Yes, yes. I was just about to do that. Um, thank you all to the band, everyone. Um, I don't know if you all want to come in a little closer. I know everyone is social uh, is uh, physical distancing, but if you want to like wave to everyone out there, that would be awesome. Hello, everybody. Hey, peace. Nice to see you all. Thank you all so much for participating in this and supporting Macy and her work. Um, it's, we're really, really uh, grateful and. Um, as I was saying, artists are the gatekeepers of truth. All artists are. Yeah, and um, everything you do too. Thank you. Macy, I look forward to doing more work with you with Sankofa.org and learning more about mygood.org and for everyone out there to be doing the same. Peace and blessings I to take, you. Should I take the fact that you said I sound like your dad as a compliment or no? Oh, are you kidding? He's one of my favorites. I love him. Yes. <laughs> that, that everyone and people say I have that same kind of last in my voice, but you really have it like he does. <laughs> I love it. It's so, so right. sexy. It's great. Before, can I just a shout out to my, my engineer, Gabe? Yes. Huh? They run. And Guido, they all made this happen. Yes, thank you to everyone there who helped this tech come through for us at the last minute, the last second we were tweaking and we, we you guys made it happen. Really, really appreciate it. And and follow me on, on Instagram at Macy Gray. Awesome, I was just, that's the next place I was gonna go, any of your oh. handles. So it's at Macy Gray on IG, anywhere else? I don't really do the other ones, but I definitely check out mygood.org. Shout outs to Sharon and Grace and everybody involved and all the moms out there. And uh, and we're gonna do everything we can for you. Absolutely. Thank you so much once again for joining us. And everyone out there, thank you for tuning in. This event is presented um, as part of the Kennedy Center Couch Concerts performance series by Millennium Stage streaming every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So make sure you check out some of the other wonderful programming that they've got going on. Again, I'm Gina Belafonte. I'm the executive director of Sankofa.org. And I hope you also do some investigating to learn more about Sankofa.org as well. Peace and blessings to everyone out there. And I hope everyone has a great day. Take care. Happy 4th. Bye-bye.